There is a break in adoption. A family is broken and that's why adoption exists. And yes, adoption is a picture of the gospel because we're broken, but the reality for humans is there is that break. And my break was quite young. Some people's break is much older, but there is that break. And it's not how God originally designed the family. My name is Chelsea Soblick, and I was adopted from Romania in 1991. I was born in um, post-communist Romania in the capital of Bucharest. My adoptive parents tried and couldn't have children naturally, and they were in the process of a domestic adoption, and it was taking years. And they actually were watching a 2020 documentary on the Romanian orphans um, after Ceausescu, who was the dictator, was killed, the, the rest of the world went into Romania um, to see the country and what they discovered was all these kids languishing in orphanages and institutions because families didn't have enough money to care for them. They watched that 2020 documentary and then um, within a very short time went to Romania to adopt myself and at the time they also adopted a little boy. We are not blood related, we are actually 11 days apart so we were essentially raised as twins. Growing up, my parents were very open with us about our, our backgrounds. I so appreciate their openness. Adoption was my normal because myself and all my siblings were adopted, so we thought it was it was our, our normal for us. And I grew up with other, knowing other families who had adopted children, so it felt very natural and normal to me, and I didn't know anything different. But the older I got, I think the more I began to process what being adopted meant and what it meant to come from another country and come from a man and a woman that I don't know what they look like or what their stories are. My birth mom was 19 when she had me and when I turned 19 that was, it was just such an odd feeling to be the age she was. One thing many adoptees walk through is on their birthdays. I think that can be, I mean it's such a joyous thing but it's also coupled with grief because there's parts of my story that I don't know and I might not ever know. One of the things that my parents didn't have, and that's because it didn't exist when they were pursuing adoption, was trauma-informed care. And no one had, you know, the brain science of kids with, with trauma or kids who have adoption and foster care as part of their stories. No one had that. It did not exist. There is so much brain science behind how to care for a kid with trauma. I studied foreign policy and international relations um, because I really wanted to move overseas and work with vulnerable kids. The Lord redirected my steps to DC. And when I moved here, I thought, what on earth? This is not my plan. The Lord put me in a job on Capitol Hill working for one of the co-chairs of the Adoption Caucus on Capitol Hill. I had the opportunity to still work for vulnerable kids, domestic and abroad. I often think of what my life would have looked like if I wasn't helped and if I wasn't adopted. And, you know, knowing if I can help one child or help one family. Some days it feels small and insignificant, but um, it matters and it matters to those kids and it matters um, to the Lord. Another piece of my story is I was born with a somewhat rare medical condition that prevents me from having biological children. So Michael married me knowing that adoption would be part of our story at some point. And we've been married a, a, over three years and we decided to start the process and we narrowed it down to a, a handful of countries and ultimately decided on India and we're pursuing um, either twins or a sibling set. My parents that adopted me were instruments in God's hand and I will get to hopefully love some kids from India and get to be an agent of God's love. You know, I do have questions about my story and my kids are gonna have questions about their story that I can't answer and their story is gonna look different than mine and I will be able to relate in some ways, but there are gonna be ways I can't relate, even though we're both adopted. My story has hard parts, but that's not all of me. That's not all I want to be defined by. And yes, I'm adopted, but I'm so many other things too. 
and that one event in my life while huge and life altering um, is not all of me. Michael and I's story has hard things of not being able to have our own biological children. That's not the end of my story, our story, um, because God tells us how the story ends. And I think that gives me so much hope. I've read the end of the Bible. I know how history ends and it ends with redemption and it ends with God promising that he will wipe away all of our tears. Journeying towards heaven with the Lord with me, I think has changed how I view my own story, how I view helping vulnerable people and how Michael and I will approach raising our kids.